multiplication questions. And I'll start by explaining it. And then after explaining it, we can do an example. We can answer some, some typical questions so that you get to start to deal with them. So now I am going to give you, I'll give you just three illustrations that are just going to make you understand what we're going to try to do with those identifications and make everything simpler. So how many of you, I just want you to indicate by raising your hand, how many of you have at any given point in the process of reading anything, you look at it like this, and then it seems like you can't see. You then look at it closely like this. But it's not because you can't see, it's because you just can't understand what you're reading. How many of you have done that before? All of you, apparently, right? <laughs> so why do you do that? Why? Is it because you can't see what's in the book? Yes? It's because you're what? Uh-huh. Slowly so that you understand it, right? That's one scenario. Either you're reading it too fast and you can't comprehend or understand what's going on. But there should be another scenario. What is it? I saw your hand. Yes? Uh, you just can't comprehend uh, what the information is trying to tell you. Uh-huh. Like you may read the word, but it just, you can't make sense of it in your head. Uh-huh. That's one other thing. It's about making sense. It doesn't make sense to you. So in other, in other words, it's not that you can't see what's on paper, but it doesn't make sense. So because it doesn't make sense, your body is reacting to the passage not making sense. Did you want to say something? Okay, that's pretty much the same, right? Okay. Yeah, but, but now what that, what that entails is that every piece of writing that you come across must do two things. It's either it must make sense or it must have the quality of answering the question. It's either those two things that must happen in any reading that you come across is either it answers the question that you have in mind already before reading that material, or that it makes sense. So that means that writing itself is a skill. It needs to address those two things. It needs to make sense, and it needs to answer a particular question. So if writing is a skill, then reading is a skill as well, just as writing. Reading must be able to fish out certain things in material that we, we get to see with our own eyes. It must be able to fish out sense. It, it, it must be able to fish out the quality of answering the question. Now I'm going to give you a few scenarios of stuff that I've come across. Like, so at some point, a friend of mine, you know, he had a, a dispute with his wife. And then I was caught by the father, the father of the wife, to say, can you come and intervene in, in a discussion? So when I went there, I thought that it, it's just like, it's a small like disagreement. I'm just going to moderate and then like speak good stuff, solve the issue and all that. But when I arrived, I saw that it was a very heated exchange. You know, when people are, are speaking with each other, you know, and they're pointing right in the eye of somebody to say, you, you don't understand. Your head is, is nothing. You get it? It's very sad. Somebody was very, very angry. And it seemed like it was going to degenerate into a fight. So I didn't have any plan to try and stop those people from having that crazy exchange, which to me was very illogical. So the debate was that the wife was saying that, I'm telling the husband that... Uh, um, we must take our, our little kid to a private school that is more prestigious than where he is right now. And then the husband was saying, no, we should buy a new car. We need a new car for the stuff that we do and the work that we do. Uh, the, the, the school that our kid is in right now is, is a good school, so there's no problem with that. So it was quite maybe a, a sensible argument. It's finance issues and all that. But it had reached a point where it was going to degenerate into a fight and all I needed to do was to just stop that kind of exchange so that there is no fighting going on. So I stopped them and I said, you know what, I know the best solution to all this. So I asked the wife, I say, you know what I want you to do? Just write everything down, everything, every reason why you feel that your proposal that 
the kid should be taken to a, a, a private school that is more prestigious. Makes more sense. Write everything down and give it to me and we'll read it and we'll see what makes sense. Yours and your husband's. And I told the husband the same thing. So I gave them a piece of paper each, a piece of pen, and then they sat down. So they, you know, they sat down with some energy and enthusiasm, thinking that they're just going to automatically download everything that they were saying in anger, right on paper. So when they sat down, none of them was able to write a sentence for like 30 minutes. They were just looking at a paper, holding a pen, but they can't write. That's one scenario. The second scenario, which was the more crazier scenario, was when I was in an elevator. I was here, I saw two students. I'm in an elevator and we're supposed to go to the ninth floor. So when we start, like, these are people I'm going to be with, like all the way up to the top. So they are talking and one guy is a very young guy, like freshman guy. He's like, um, I think Michael Jordan is, is a better player than LeBron James. He's the, he's the God. He was saying he's the God, the greatest of all time. So they're having this disagreement. It's huge. This other guy saying, no, LeBron James is better. This other guy saying, Michael Jordan is better. So I did the same thing to them. I said, okay, to end this debate, I'll give you a paper, I'll give you a paper, I'll give you a pen. Write all the reasons down that you feel that this, pl this player is the best. Like if, you, if need be, do the research. Put it down and give it to me, and then we'll come back together and discuss the points based on what we have written down. I saw the same guys after two days. None of them had done so. Why do you think these people were not able to write down their arguments on paper, even though they felt so strongly about the positions that they are taking in the argument? Why? In these two scenarios, why? In other words, what makes writing so difficult? I'll take you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Very important. What else do you think? It's not an easy thing. Why? Because writing is a skill. And writing is a process that is governed by guidelines, by rules and regulations. That guide how, sent how words are constructed into sentences, how sentences are then constructed into paragraphs that make sense, that advance an argument and that advance a theme. But I know what you're basically thinking of is the rules that govern what we call writing grammatically. That's one thing. And that quality, most of us at this point have gotten it. That is why you were able to move from pre-primary school, middle school, uh, high school, up to university. It's because the assessors, the people who assessed your writing, they saw that it passes that quality of writing grammatically. But now at this level, the quality that you need to embrace much more is the quality of making sense, answering the question, and making a very, very valid argument and a valid point. So that stage is not easy to accomplish because we learn things in a different way and we come from very different disciplines. How many of you do STEM degrees? Almost a quarter of the class, right? How many of you do humanities? Okay, just a few people. So these people who do humanities have a certain kind of training. So they have a certain kind of approach to answering questions. And that's the same thing with people who do STEM degrees. They deal with some complicated stuff. Like humanities do deal with complicated stuff as well. But we just have different styles and techniques of answering questions. But when we come to a course that brings us together like this, for we've got to have that skill as a group. So that's still got to be taught as a group and got to be mastered as a group. So now, with this context and understanding that we have two sections, identifiers and longer essays. I'm going to start with identifiers. And we want to go through that process and be able to understand uh, what exactly do we need to achieve and then we attempt to do it so that you are prepared. Let's start with the 
uh, the definition of an identification question. So normally in any scenario, if you can write this down, an identification is just a basic question that is intended to test your understanding of three things. It's a very, very basic question that is intended to test your ability to understand three things, or if not, like four or five things. So mostly an identification question contains questions about people, questions about events, questions about concepts, and con questions about places. So it could come in any form. It could be a people, it could be events, it could be concepts, it could be places, it could be quotations. So these are the, the, the main aspects that are asked in identification questions. So as historians, as examiners, we are going to fish them out from the discourse and from the content that we taught you. That's one skill. And the skill that we are going to require you to do is to be able to interpret those things and to be able to provide very brief explanations that show that you have mastered the content, the content and that you understand the subject matter. The point of identification questions is very simple. We want to see if you understand the subject matter. We want to see if you have mastered the content before we start to engage you with a longer essay. Because a longer essay will be very difficult to handle if you just haven't been able to understand the very basics of mastering the content that you are being taught. So that is, this is the very elementary and fundamental stage of um, the examination part. So now, by asking you about people, about historical characters, historical events, historical concepts, historical quotations and places, what we mostly want you to do, the utmost point that we want you to make is to show and demonstrate understanding of the significance, of the importance, of the relevance, and the applicability of whatever we have asked you. That is what we will credit the most. That is exactly what we will credit the most. So it doesn't matter whether it's you have written it in a very flowery fashion. It doesn't we are looking for the ability to make sense and the ability to answer the question. And we can only fish that out by establishing this connection right here. Yes, we, we've, have, we have indicated a place, we've indicated a person, we've indicated a concept, we've indicated a quotation, but what is the significance and importance of whatever that we have brought to question or whatever that is asked in the examination? So now, <coughs> for us to make this very easy and clear to, to go through, you will know that, and you must know that, any answer that you are going to provide that is answering a, 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 an identification question must have three parts. If it doesn't have those three parts, it's not answering the question. It's either you're getting a zero or you're rewriting it for identifications. It must have three important parts, or it must address three important segments, if not, then you're not answering the question. And if not, then you must not doubt the grade that you're going to get because it's clear you are not following what's needed. So now, this is a very important point to emphasize because there is a, a tragic logic that most of us develop whenever we are faced with a question. How many of you have found themselves in a position where you feel like, I'm just going to say everything that I know. I know, this, that, you know. We mustn't be ashamed about this, right? But by raising up my hand, I'm involving myself in this, right? <laughs> so we have all come across a situation, a very tragic situation where we just were tempted to just use this logic of saying everything that we know about a subject matter, about, a pe about people, about a historical character, about an event, a concept, a place, 
or any quotation that we are faced with. Why? Because we are refusing to master the ability to fish the important aspects. And sometimes that happens not because you are unaware of the guidelines. It's because you are aware of the guidelines, but you are just probably lazy to fish out the relevant material. Because relevant material can only be fished out if you are a wide reader and if you take time to process stuff. Now, what are those three aspects that we want to fish out in any answer on the identifications? Number one is the definition. You write that down. Is the definition. Now, is the definition of a given person, of a given event, of a given concept, of a given place, or a quotation that you're faced with? We have to have a very clearly articulated definition of what we're talking about. If it's a person, then we must know. If it's a place, then we must know. And that definition must pay attention to this question. What is the term and where does it come from? 